So the Yankees are being linked to two big pitching arms. Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Hopefully you've recovered from that 17 to 5 murderous attack we underwent last night at the hands of the Orioles. So they won the series two games to one. It's in the past now. Move on. Got the Atlanta Braves in town now. And I want to keep you filled in on what we're hearing as we start to get closer and closer to the trade deadline, right? Like he's being linked to this, being linked to that, who might be a good fit and so on and so forth. I'll be doing my own be trade deadline predictions. I'll be doing a bunch of other things as well. So uh, make sure no matter what, if you're not subbed to this channel, please check that. Please uh, check that subscribe button. Okay. Do the right thing and hit the notification button as well. That way you don't miss news, you don't miss updates, you don't miss anything important, you don't miss any live streams either if you want to join in, join in on the party. So I thank you for it, and uh, we've, we've uh, surpassed the 21,000 subscriber plateau, so I, your support's greatly appreciated. It does mean the world. Now, let's talk about this, okay? Number one, you've got Garrett Crochet, okay? This is a left-hand stud from the Chicago White Sox. I've been talking with Mikey Mazza from Fortran Express about Crochet for probably about almost two years now. There's an article on uh, Zach Bashar from uh, Bleach Report that's you know suggesting that the Yankees go well, they're not saying, and, and this is confirmed by John Hurt and John Heeman too, that they're actually expressing interest in Garrett Crochet now. Now, what do we need to know about Crochet? Well, number one, he's a reliever, a power reliever, but they're converting him into a starter. He's thrown about 88 innings, he's four and four. Uh, no, excuse me, six and six and eight innings, 124 strikeouts. So he's a huge arm on the lefty side. But this is the first time he's thrown this many innings. So, And he did have Tommy John in 2022. So durability might be a concern here as you move up. But I don't know if they're going to want to do that or not. Now, he would be surrounded by a heck of a lot better pitching staff in the Yankees than he would be on the White Sox. Okay? And he will likely, more than likely, get moved by the White Sox as will probably Lewis Robert and a bunch of other guys. I think they're going to go on a full-fledged fire sale. But this is an arm that the Yankees need to look into. Okay? Will the price tag be high? Yeah, he's got two years before he becomes a free agent. So the price tag is going to be high. Let's just get that out of the way now. How high? I don't know. But, you know, not Mason Miller high. But it's going to be high. And what do the Yankees do with him? Do they keep him? Do they transition him into the rotation? Do they? Do they... Keep him in long relief, put him in a bullpen. I don't know what they're going to do. But he's shown the versatility already, that Josh Hader type versatility where he's going to throw you know, one inning or throw multiple innings, which is why I think the White Sox are trying to move him up to the rotation. Okay, and he'll become a more valuable asset too in free agency if he does that too. If he continues to stay durable uh, post Tommy John while performing the way he is as a starter, you know, and he's 6-6 six six on a terrible team. You put him on a better team, it could be a different story, okay? We have another guy, 28-year-old Jack Flaherty from the Detroit Tigers, okay? And Crochet's 25, Flaherty's 28. Okay, he's another one. He's 4-4 four and four with a 301 ERA, okay? 100 strikeouts, okay? Another big arm on a terrible team, okay? Well, not, not so good team. They're not as bad as the White Sox, but... He's an arm. It sounds like he's going to be available too at the trade deadline. So, and this is an article by uh, Patrick McAvoy of, of Inside the Pinstripes. It's confirming that too. I think he should be looking into Jack Flaherty as well. So they're being linked to these two guys. Okay. Now the question remains: like, he's a starting he's a starting pitcher. To me, the starting rotation is not the biggest need for the Yankees. I think it's the infield followed closely or tie even tied with the bullpen. And then after that, you can add a piece to the rotation if you think it's appropriate. But if they do add a piece in the rotation, my guess is either Luis Hill or um, Nestor Cortez is going to be moved to the pen. It's got to be that way, you know. And, and, and Luis Hill's coming off Tommy John. I know they said there's not, you know, there's not really an innings limit for him, but you know, I, I think they're watching that closely. And then Matt Blake said just as much as well. So, and again, he took that. He took a beating at the hands of the Orioles yesterday. So, he needed to be humbled. I said this last night. He needed to be humbled like that. And the Yankees needed to be humbled like that, too. You know, 
We're not just we can't just sit here and say that 25 games over 500, nothing's wrong. But we also can't just say they lose the series, the season's over. They're 17 and five in series this year, season series. They're okay. They're okay. And again, June is not October. I don't care what the Yankees do in June right now. This is what the trade deadline is for, right? So they can address needs in a strategic manner towards who they think they're going to play in the postseason, right? They can say, okay, we're definitely going to face the Orioles in the postseason. What do we need to neutralize the Orioles, right? We're definitely going to face whoever if we get to the World Series, the Dodgers, the Phillies, whoever, right? What would we need to neutralize those guys or beat those guys, okay? So they're going to be, I think, very strategic as to whom they're going to be Signing or acquiring and so on and so forth. And obviously it's acquiring trade deadline. You're talking about acquiring players. So these two guys represent fits. And the fact is they're going to be available most likely on the, on, because of the team performance of their teams. So do the Yankees look into that? I mean, they, they can look into both, to be honest. They can put one in the bullpen and one in the rotation if they want to do that. But I don't think they will. I mean, Jack Flaherty is going to cost less in terms of package uh, return than Crochet would. So would I be surprised if the Yankees got either one? No. I mean, they're they're close from being a World, a World Series contender, okay? But they have some pieces that they need to address. They have to fortify the bullpen. We know this. They've got to get more production out of the infield. We know this too. So if they add to an already strength, the, the pitching rotation, starting rotation, that's not going to hurt them. But the fact is they will have to move somebody to the pen. And will they move the right guy to the pen? Will that guy be an asset? I think Luis Hill will probably be more of an asset than Nestor Cortez would. So at that point, would they trade Nestor Cortez in a, as a pack, in a package for, let's say, an infield bat? Let's just say to the Cardinals for a Nolan Gorman or Brandon Donovan or something, right? Something. So will they do that? There's so many moving pieces here. In terms of what the Yankees can do, what the Yankees should do, what the Yankees will do, and we generally don't know. And we usually what they sh what we think they should do is generally not what they actually do. That's the fun of the stuff. That's also the frustrating part of the stuff too. So, but that's baseball. Okay, this is why I'm going to have some people on, and we're going to do a roundtable of, of who the best fits are, what we think the Yankees should do, what we think they will do, and I'm very much looking forward to that. And I'll be doing another. I have another couple of guests on talk about our MLB tra uh, trade deadline predictions, not only for the Yankees, but for everybody across the board. Who do we think that's going to get moved? Who do we think it's not going to get moved? For, and, and, and if it happens to be Yankee related, then it will be Yankee related too. And that's going to be fun. So stay tuned. There's a lot of fun stuff coming, but I wanted to tell you about these two guys. You know, we may, you may or may not have heard. Okay. Jack Flaherty. Garrett Crochet, this, these are the two guys that the Yankees are being linked to right now a little bit more aggressively. And generally, when they're linked to a player a little bit more aggressively, you might want to pay attention a little bit, a little bit closer. So, and, you know, and I'll keep you updated no matter what. So and I'm sure there's going to be more names that are going to present themselves that are going to become available that we don't know that are available yet. That's, that's a trade deadline, too. Things change, especially the week of the trade deadline. And needs change, too. So the Yankees' needs could be different at that point. You know, I don't expect any labor tours went down yesterday. I mean, he had a home run, but he went down with a groin problem. Groin tightness, but it could turn to a groin injury. Just like Jason Dominguez got put on a seven-day IL because he had a little bit of pain on the left side. Now he's got an oblique strain. That's He's going to miss eight weeks. So my guess is labor tours is going to miss a, a decent amount of time. So this might be a good time for the Yankees to investigate on how to fortify the second base position particularly since they're not going to re-sign Gleyber Torres, particularly since he doesn't have much trade value, right? So how do they do it? Who else can they trade here that they can in, in a position that they could bring in somewhere else? And I, it's, it's leads me to a guy like Nestor Cortez, who could be a valuable piece in a, in a, for in a package to get an infielder who could be productive, especially since these guys are being talked about. You know, if I was going to replace Nestor Cortez, it wouldn't be for a lot of guys, but I would do it for Craig Crochet. You know, it depends. And again, I don't know what they would have to give up for him. But my, I'm hearing that the Chicago White Sox want pitching. So my guess is you're going to have to give up probably either Chase Hampton or Will Warren, and and then some to get Crochet. I think he's got two more years after the show before he's a free agent. So and he's young, he's 25, and he's filthy dominant right now. So that's going to be factored in. 
Okay, and there will be teams. Don't be surprised. I mean, the Orioles have the resources to get them too. And do we want them to go to the Orioles? I don't. You know, I mean, especially, <laughs> I mean, if the Orioles get a guy like Mason Miller, uh, which they very well could, then that would be all over Gary Crochet. But again, now's the time for the Yankees to consider making some of these moves, not at the trade deadline. So, you know, the Yankees is not, the, the team is not falling apart. Having a, a bit of adversity, 25 games over 500. They're not falling apart, okay? There are some things that they need to address, yes, okay? But I, I encourage folks to maintain a level of perspective and just breathe and exhale, and the, and the Yankees will. I, and I, and I do. they know this as well, Brian Cashman and Hal. They know they've got to make moves sooner than later. They wouldn't have brought in a guy like Juan Soto if they weren't planning on fortifying the team to help put them in a position to win a championship. So... I expect the Yankees to be busy, especially in the next couple of days and couple of weeks. So stay tuned. It's coming. Talk to you later.